Hello and welcome to another video episode of my crafty podcast. My name is Cheryl and um, this channel is Cappuccino Crafts. My username on uh, social media uh, is Cappuccino136 and I am active on Ravelry, Instagram, and Goodreads. So you can look me up there. I will spell that and have other show notes of yarns and patterns and book titles and and other details of things that I talk about that I think you might want to be able to uh, look up and get more information about yourselves. All those will be in the show notes in the information box beneath this video. And I hope that is helpful for you. Um, there are no links. They, they aren't linkable, but um, I hope that's okay for you. Um, but yeah, this is welcome to my little um, corner of the interweb here on YouTube. And I like to talk about knitting and crochet and other uh, bookish things and TV and movies that I'm watching and other things that just capture my interest and that I want to chat about. Um, yeah, so please um, get yourself a beverage, uh, whatever you like. And, um, yeah, sit down and get out your yarn or your embroidery floss and your needle, your hook, your spindle or spinning wheel, whatever you need. And let's have some crafty chat together. Yeah. So, it's been another week. <laughs> they go by so fast, don't they? They really, really do. Um, yeah, it's another Monday. Today is the 16th of September and um, 2019. And uh, yeah, we're it's going to be 2020 before we even know it. I, the year has just flown by. Um, but yeah, so things have been progressing uh, in my projects. Here are my Mercury socks. They're progressing on the foot, all done with the gusset decreases. And now I'm actually taking the stitch count down as I head closer to the toe. Um, because that's just how my feet are shaped. I don't need as much room uh, on the lower part of my foot um, as I get toward my toes, but I, I need all the room in here. I need all that. But um, also I'm, I'm having to start to decrease the pattern I decided to kind of taper it and tapering it on both sides if you can see I hope you can um, because as the stitch count goes down I can't do uh, <laughs> it doesn't work so well for the all the repeats of the of the mercury lace pattern so I decided to just kind of have it taper down uh, toward the toe. And that's how I'm dealing with that because um, I'd rather have it fit nicer than keep the pattern perfectly intact all the way down. Um, so that's just a modification I'm making. And that's what you need to do sometimes to get the perfect custom fit, um, which is why it's worth making 
uh, hand knit socks because you really can custom fit them to you. Um, I do a more detailed sock talk episode earlier. It's actually, I, I put sock talk in the video title too. Um, if you just want more sock talk, are you a sock knitter? <laughs> if you love socks or if you're curious about socks um, and you're like, yeah, I, I thought I might want to try them, but or if you're just like, why do people knit socks? I talk about all those things in that sock talk video. Um, so, yeah. But loving, loving those socks still. I did have a problem with a knot in my Patton's Croy yarn. And the striping pattern got interrupted. You can see they were nicely matching. Here they were matching and then there was a knot and the the pattern the stri the color stripes on this went to another spot. I not really too upset, um, but I am glad that the matching part is on the leg cuz if I'm going to have part matching and part not. I'd rather have the leg matching and then, the, you know, the bottom half of the foot. Who cares? Um, yeah. I have used Patton's Croy FX and um, Patton's Croy striped uh, yarn colorways. Um, I've used a good bit of Patton's Croy yarn, and I have to say this is uh, just the second knot that I've had do this in the yarn. So that's not, um, that I mean, that's something that happens. Um, and when you're, if you're buying indie hand-dyed yarn and luxury yarns, you can tend to get a little frustrated with that. Um, but it, it's more common in the commercial yarns and it does happen sometimes. Um, and some, some companies are a little notorious about it and some, com but, um, I have not found that to be, uh, a, a widespread problem with Patton's Croy. Um, in the, the skeins that I've used. So um, it's not making me, I'm not going to stop using Patton's Croy. <laughs> it's, uh, it hasn't turned me off of their yarn. Um, I really like the Patton's Croy sock yarn. Um, and here is my my sweater my boxy by Hohi Locatelli I am just a couple rounds from splitting and right now I'm pausing it just a little because I'm thinking about my strategy for when I split and what I'm going to do about alternating skeins. I don't really want to uh, to do that uh, twist up one side and have the ones. So I'm thinking about maybe a way I can try to do something similar to the helical knitting um, back and forth when I'm doing it in the flat and not in the round anymore. I'm also asking myself whether I think I can get away with not alternating when I'm knitting in the flat for the for the back and the front. So while I make that decision, I'm pausing a little bit on that. Um, yeah. And I cast on a hat. Here is the brim. I'm doing magic loop. 
for this on my um, Haya Haya Sharps. Here is about half of the ribbed brim. I'm going to do it up to like probably that high, about three and a half inches or so. Um, this is going to be the Everglade hat, which is a pattern by Wooly Wormhead, who is a very interesting designer. Um, and she only, only designs hats. That's all she does. And she has done hats in all kinds of different constructions. She's a very interesting and very um, mathematical kind of uh, hat designer and um, does all kinds of different shaped hats and different construction and interesting techniques. Um, this hat is uh, going to be maybe slightly slouchy or to medium slouchy and it's going to have lace on the, the body of the hat, a kind of a leafy lace. Um, which Everglades might make you think of foliage and, um, yeah, so the pattern is on Ravelry and I have made a project page already for this, but, um, one thing I was impressed by, look at how nice that cast on edge is. This is a cast on technique. I have not used for ribbing before. It's a, a cable cast on and I have done just a regular cable cast on but this is an alternating cable cast on where you do a cable cast on where you knit the stitch on and it, then the next stitch you um, cable cast on from the other direction and purl that stitch on and it just makes such a really lovely almost invisible edge which I really really like now sometimes I'm just like I'm gonna use the cast on I want to use and I don't really care what cast on that the designer tells me sometimes it depends but in this situation, because I know Wooly Wormhead is a very detail-oriented designer, and um, I, I was like, you know, I think there really is, uh, she really chose that cast on carefully. I, I know that about her, um, so... And I'm going to give it a try. I haven't tried a new cast on in a while. And it's not a very complicated one. She gives uh, diagrams and instructions for the um, alternating cable cast on in the pattern. So um, you, can, you can follow her diagrams and instructions in the pattern. Um, which I did. Uh, in this case, that was enough for me. I didn't need a video, but if you like a video, um, you could try looking up on YouTube because whenever I come across a technique that I don't know but I'm curious about and think I'd like to try, I often just type it into YouTube and there will be tutorials uh, most of the time but uh, I didn't need them this time so I just used her diagrams in the pattern and it worked beautifully I'm gonna keep this idea for other hats in the future because I like it now I have on a couple hats done a tubular cast on which can be fiddly and a little complicated and um, it gives a gorgeous look though if you do a tubular cast on for ribbing 
um, it get it just looks like everything just invisibly turns it's completely invisible and looks so nice um, but it can be uh, fiddly and not that fun but this looks almost 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 as invisible, almost as good as that tubular cast on. And it is nice and stretchy, which you need when you're casting on for a rib and for a hat rib or a soft cuff rib, you need really stretchy because it's got to, it's got to fit over your head or over your heel and your leg. So it's very stretchy and it looks so nice, almost almost as perfect as a tubular cast on but easier this is definitely easier than the tubular cast on so i i think i'm gonna keep this uh keep this in my back pocket for my hats yeah i love it um this yarn do i have the label here yeah this yarn is by for the hat, the blue yarn for the out for the hat, the Everglade hat is Outlaw yarn, and the base is Nyx. This is a DK weight yarn, and Nyx, the Nyx base is seventy percent Polworth and thirty percent silk. It should make a wonderful hat and I've never used Polworth wool before I've never never uh, knit with Polworth so fun always fun to try a new wool and then mixed with silk I mean gorgeous 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 I'm enjoying knitting with this yarn it's a lovely lovely yarn so yeah excited about that um, I'm also I chose a pattern for another small project that will be my next small cast on it's gonna be fingerless mitts yeah so sometime in the next few weeks you'll see that those coming up um, I put the pattern in my queue in my Ravelry queue So, that is my current projects. And how are your projects going? What are you working on? Did you cast on anything new? Um, are you trying to finish <laughs> trying to finish up all the things you've already started yeah I know that's always that's the struggle right that's why I try and keep my cast ons to a small number at a time and it usually I'm usually able to keep with that and So, yeah, um, reading has been going well, um, but not, I mean, nothing new to say about my books, because I haven't gotten back to my audio books yet. And I um, am about two thirds of the way through both of my paperbacks. So the Peter S. Beagle uh, read a thon will end fairly soon. Um, and I plan to. In the next couple weeks, be starting a new listen. I'm going to start listening to Adam Bede by George Eliot, which is a Victorian 
classic novel. I have read George Eliot before, but I have not read Adam Bede. So I'm looking forward to it. And while I listen to Adam Bede, I will be knitting a sweater. This is an event called the Knit and Listen Along, hosted by Mel of Bookland Adventures. That's her YouTube channel. Mel's Bookland Adventures is her YouTube channel. And she and some other booktubers are hosting that. And um, in general, uh, Booktube does uh, Victorian reading in October and they call it Victober. Kind of like some of our crafting month themes we have for some months. Like some people do Socktober and knit all the socks in October or um, eh, that's the one that comes to mind right now. Others aren't flooding into my mind so we'll just leave it at the one example. But um, there are other special themes that we do for certain months in the crafting in the fiber crafting uh, online sphere. But um, if anybody's interested in the knit and listen along, check out the details in the intro video in that she does she does a, an announcement video. Mel does on her channel and you can start picking your pattern and um, getting ready with an audio copy from the library or from Audible or I bet I bet Gutenberg probably has Adam Bede as an audio um, there are probably a lot of places you could find it. I like Project Gutenberg, although I haven't used it a ton, but I love the idea of it. Um, yeah. So I hope your reading is going well. And that you're enjoying it. Um, yeah, I, I wish I was a faster reader and blowing through my my books at a faster rate and had um, have more to say. But I'm I I don't go through them fast, so. Sorry about that. Are you a fast reader or fast listener? Um, anyway, and let's see. TV, movies. Uh, I finished the last season. I didn't realize at the time it was going to be the finale finale, like no more seasons, no more episodes of iZombie. I got to the very end, the fifth season. It got five seasons and I finished it this week. Um, and it went out on a, on a good season. Um, and the finale just, it did wrap everything up. It didn't really leave too many loose ends. Uh, too many, not uh, like tons of open questions and cliffhangers. Um, so, you know, they gave it, they gave it plenty of closure. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed iZombie a lot 
I'll probably re-watch it sometime. Um, you know, in a few years. But it was, it was a good show, and I'm glad that, you know, they got five seasons. Um... And I'm also in the middle of rewatching The Good Place, the f season four, which I found out I was curious because I'd heard a rumor. So I did look online and yeah, the fourth season of The Good Place is the final season. Um, I'd already started rewatching because I started rewatching with my sister, uh, when she was visiting. I introduced her to it because she had never seen it. And the good place, if you, if you're, if you haven't seen it, and I don't know, I don't know how widely popular it is, um, in general. It's a sitcom with a really fun premise. It's a sitcom about the afterlife, basically, and philosophy. It's a philosophy afterlife sitcom, which is a pretty weird thing. <laughs> but it's weird in the best ways. Yeah, it's fun. It's good. Um, the Good Place. So it has to be good, right? Um, no, not really, but it happens to be good. <laughs> yeah, um, they're these, uh, the main four characters uh, are humans that died, I think, um, at around the same time anyway and they meet in the afterlife in the good place that's the first thing the very first scene is uh, Eleanor uh, waking up and being given a wel welcome and uh, told that she has come to the good place after her life has ended on earth and the premise is so if there's a good place there's also a bad place in this uh scenario you do have only the two options the good place or the bad place and you get sorted and sent to wherever um but there's been a mistake with Eleanor. We she finds out very quickly. She realizes that there has been a mistake, uh, some kind of identity, uh, mistaken identity, and she does not belong in the good place. So not where she should have gone, and so then all kinds of. Complications and hijinks ensue. And that's all I'm going to say. Because um, there, I don't want to get spoilery about what, what those complications are. But it does have a nice progression. It's very unusual for a sitcom to have a progression in the story. But this one does. It really does. And I don't, the writers are so talented and skilled. There are a lot of developments in, during, throughout the seasons. Um, things change and there are, yeah, it's really, really fun. And... The way that philosophy comes into this is because Eleanor, me, one of the other main characters, 
that she, the, the main four is, uh, and during his lifetime, he was a philosophy professor. And that was his passion, uh, studying and teaching philosophy. So when she learns that she does not belong in the good place and that she was really pretty much a very, <laughs> a pretty cruddy person, she was not a good person at all. Um, even though somehow they still make her really likable, which is a trick. I don't know how they... Yeah, that, anyway, so hand it to the writers for, <laughs> for making her still likable, but she gets, uh, she gets cheaty to teach her philosophy so that she can become better and learn how to be a good person and deserve to be in the good place. Anyway, so I am in the middle of rewatching that I am partway through season two. And then there's, or two or three, ah, I can't remember right now. Whether, I think I did start season three. I think I, anyway, but season four will come in the near future. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing what happens in the fourth season and just enjoying. This is one of those shows that is really good on a rewatch. Some shows are not good on a rewatch. But um, The Good Place is really still a lot of fun on a rewatch. So, yeah. I hope that you guys have had a really good week. Um... And I hope that uh, your family and uh, everyone, all your loved ones are doing well and that you are doing well. I hope all your creative projects are coming along and successfully and that uh, you are enjoying working on them. And I think that's really about all, all I wanted to chat about today. Um, so we'll see when I end the video. It might be a little bit short today, but that's okay, right? That's okay. I appreciate you for uh, spending some time together. I hope you enjoyed um, crafting together and I hope your beverage was very delicious and see you next time.